always filming. Today you are making coffee. <laughs> we're gonna learn how to use a pour over since all the coffee shops are closed. You, gotta learn you how need to do it good, yourself. good coffee yourself. This is a skill you should know how to do anyway. So I figured I would teach Jen here <laughs> and show you that you can teach anybody and anybody can make coffee. <laughs> anybody. Okay, so first thing is first. We're actually doing it without a skill. That's way more difficult because normally what you would do is just calculate how much coffee you need, weigh it out, and then calculate how much water you need, and then you can just pour over onto the scale and you know exactly how much water you're adding. So I know that's a little bit more than most people do, but if you're one of those people that doesn't like to do that, this is perfect. Since we don't know how much water we're actually gonna be adding, what we do is measure it out in the cup that we're brewing into beforehand. So if we want you know, pretty much a full cup, a full glass, we half full, half glass. full glass. You do need a full cup. Then we'll fill up the cup and that's what we'll put into the kettle. So, go ahead. It's a little bit of an insider trick. Oh god, here I go. Actually, I gotta start doing, I gotta stop doing this. It's all you. Well, that was pretty Ooh, that good. was clean. That was impressive. I'm gonna put one more drop in since I messed up. Okay. Boom. You want room for extra, actually, because you're gonna wet the filter. You're right. So, okay, that's a lot. We're not worried about that much. Just in case. That's a wet ass filter. Okay, so let's start. So let's get that, let's get that, uh, uh, not my let's direction. get that rumbling. Okay, then. Start the water. But I take, I take a while to grind it. And so I will say we're using a Hamilton Beach kettle, gooseneck. The temperature isn't on there. I love this kettle. It's super fast. So fast. Really fast. Once it boils, you're at 210 and you could honestly let it sit for like a minute or two. You're probably down to 205 or you could throw in two ice cubes right when it's done boiling, you'll be around 205, which is the right Optimal. room temperature. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna fold that, oh, we'll crease it. Yes. I have done this perfect. twice now, so I'm not an expert, but I'm also very bad. Pretty cool. All right, so now we have to get our coffee. This is actually Mexican Turquesa, single origin, roasted coffee, company coffee. Nice medium roast. There you go, really wafted. That's, that's good. good. <laughs> Wait, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's, that's, that's like Bonnie's quote. That's good stuff. All right. Then okay, you, so this is not screwed up. This is the ancient coffee grinder. It is not the ancient coffee grinder. This is a coffee coffee grinder. No, it's grinder. very nice. I just like the automatic ones, but they're not as... So we're going to do this, nice. this one right here. Coffee coffee grinder. Hand grinder. I've actually had this for a while. It's it's a pretty good hand grinder. You want to make sure if you get a hand grinder, it's a burr grinder. These things right here do not work for pour over. So I forgot, I actually have to be a little more technical because I'm teaching. Okay, so this is not going to give you a good grind for pretty much anything because it's going to be very variable. Very variable. It's not going to give you a consistent grind. It'll be some coarse, some too fine, and you're going to get really mixed. You don't want that. These burr grinders, this awesome. is what you want. They're just tough to use if you're not that strong like me. I'm pretty strong. Yeah, I was gonna say pretty strong. But it's hard. You're pretty strong. Okay. So we did three tablespoons Thank for you. our rough. What? How many did you do? No, I did three. But oh, okay. One of them was kind of small, so I did a little extra. Okay, so we did three-ish tablespoons for the coffee, based off our roughly like 12 ounces of water, if you want to use it as a rule of thumb. But once you have that in there, our water's almost done boiling, so we're gonna go ahead and grind the coffee. Here we go. This is the tough part. You got it, babe. You got it. Come on. This is really good. That's a smooth. Yeah, the key is to like, do it really smoothly. I think that's the word. Mm -hmm. Smoothly. Nice and smooth. Um, so Bondi always yells at me because I like very speeds and stuff like that. So this is my best you word be yet. It around. Yeah, it's I, good to I, plant I, it on the table. This is helpful. I said my good. left arm is like really cramping. I'm like maxing out. Okay, I'm gonna switch to right. Not as good. I'm not as good. All right, so basically, you're gonna grind the coffee. I'll go ahead and take this part over. You're going to wet the filter. Wet the filter. So this is important. You want to wet the filter. Just if you put like the coffee in first and then start pouring through your surface, and then start pouring, what is going to happen is the filter is going to absorb some of the coffee, and we're just avoiding that, making it flow better, and not having that. Good. good. Yeah. It looks like you ruffled it. Well, it was, it came in. Can we get a shot of the filter? We need your camera right here. Yeah. We need the double angle. I know. I don't want to set that back up. I know. <laughs> okay. Can we grab it? Yeah. Pause. I don't 
don't think it turned on. All right, so we're gonna, oh, yeah, I forgot about this camera. Lens cap, perfect. So I'm gonna show you the grind size. When you do a pour over, the grind size is gonna be like medium fine. So as you can tell, I don't know, can you see on there? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's, like I said, medium fine. It's gonna look like what you buy ground coffee at the store. That's kind of the, the what you're going for. It's like sea salt, but a little bit more fine. And this grinder is perfect, so we're gonna have some chunks that are a little bigger, but that's roughly what you're going for. Now that that's all ground up, we're gonna let that sit for a second, and actually, sorry, oh, you go. I'm, I'm back. I'm, that's my bad. I just wanted to get some shots. I keep taking over. All right, we're gonna dump the water out. The other thing that this has been doing is warming our mug. If the Secret. mug is cold when we start brewing into it, then we're gonna lose some of the heat of our coffee. We don't want that, okay. at least not at the moment. Is it ready? It's ready, so now we're gonna put the coffee in the pour over. This is the important. I do advise that you learn how to do this with a scale because it makes it very consistent. But if you don't have a scale, obviously you still need coffee. Which so we don't. We need to make sure. We order one. Yeah, we should order one. I have. We have. I have so many scales. To it. They're in this. They're in this store. Oh, I was like, it just disappeared one day. So we want to level out our coffee inside the pour over. Should I? Should I try to show? What? Yeah, you can. Okay. Unlevel it. Yeah, it probably will unlevel but it. There you go. You want a nice flat bed of coffee. If not, you can just put your pour over video in. That's here. true, I do have a pour over video. Okay. All right. So we're gonna actually let this guy. Oh, steam out. Yeah, just just, just a little bit. He's been bit. sitting for a minute. He has been sitting for a minute. But we'll let some of that cottonness escape. And there's tons of things you can brew coffee on at home. I personally like the pour over. I think it gives you the most control. I like the pour over. We have our handy dandy French, French, French press right here, our two French presses. Both of these were purchased at At Home in Thomasville, where we sell coffee. Feel free. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so yeah, definitely go get your own because they're beautiful and they are very This one fun. is so cute. I yeah, picked this one out. And it's right into the mug, that's cool. But you can get a but you can get cheap ones on Amazon. Yeah. If you're in a pinch. And yeah, I, yeah, they Bodum sells one for like ten bucks at Target. Yeah, and, and they're it's, all gonna it's pretty like much cool be the same. It's cool looking. Like it looks like you're really. I think it's a kind of like. I have a Hario. It's kind of like a knob. It has like the nice yes. leather. and that's tie. what I like to use as a Hario. This one's awesome, but the Hario is like kind of the go-to. Kalita is popular. Like There's a bunch. So, anyways, we're gonna do our first pour. What is this? The Bloom. Yes, the Bloom. So we're pouring pretty much the same amount of water as we have coffee. So I've heard some people do one to one, one to two. You just wanna make sure all of the coffee is wet. So wet the grounds, that's good. We'll cut to this part on this camera. It's gonna be really bubbling. And that's when the, the coffee's letting out the CO2. That's how you know it's fresh. If it doesn't bubble, then that means the coffee's dead. It's not releasing any gases. Wow. So great. the more it bubbles, the fresher it is. The more gas is coming out. We're gonna wait like 30, 45 seconds. So yeah, wait like this 30, 45 so cool. seconds. I love, the bloom is my favorite part. It's like 30, 45 seconds, and then you're good to have your first pour. I like to do two or three pours, <gasps> meaning I'm done. I was gonna say it looks like a chocolate muffin, and then I realized I left my chocolate muffins at my mom's, and I got so sad I bought these yummy chocolate muffins. Okay, well let's get pouring, because it's time. Oh yeah, time. So. Circle motions. Circular motions, starting in the middle, Moving your way out to the outside. I need more middle pour. A little more. So, that's our first pour. What we're gonna do is wait for the coffee level to rise, but we don't want it to all drip out. So once it starts seeming like you're about to start seeing coffee grounds, that's when you wanna pour again. And so that's where we're getting. Go ahead. I'm seeing them, okay. So, you wanna make sure that you're getting the coffee that's stuck to the edge of the pour over off as well. Although the majority of the coffee since we have this cone shape, the coffee on the outsides isn't as deep. So you wanna make sure the majority is being poured in the middle where you have the greatest amount of coffee. So that's why you pour to the middle, but you have to get the outside too, or else that coffee is not gonna be Just brewed. a waste. We don't waste coffee on here. Okay. That was what I like. A little dribble. So now we're, oh, not yet. We're almost on our last pour. I'm scared I put too much out. in. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so this is our final pour and essentially what we do now is just wait for it to all drip out. And then you have your ready to drink cup. If you do it right, you have the right grind size, that's good. The right grind size and everything, and you pour accurately, that's good, you just dump it out. Then it should take about two to three minutes from when you pour after the bloom to when it is actually all in the cup. About two to three minutes, it's a rule of thumb. 
Again, scales make things way easier, but you do have to do a little bit more math beforehand. The best coffee ratio, if you are using a scale, I like is one to 15, but I say start one to 16. That's one parts coffee to 15 parts water. So if I have 25 grams of coffee, and this I would know by using a scale, I'm gonna do 375 grams of water. So that's the best way to do it, I think, <laughs> because you know exactly how much you're brewing and how much coffee you have per gram of water or vice versa. But this works too. Sometimes you're in a pinch or you're traveling and you don't have a scale. And you wanna make sure that you know how to make coffee Decently, at least. It's travel <laughs> scale. Little travel scale. I did that though when I got stopped in Washington D.C. Wait, really? And they pulled well, on the luggage. Thought you were doing drugs. Yeah, I went to an <laughs> entrepreneurship conference, and of For course, coffee. I, I had a panel of judges that I pitched a product to, oh, and I, I brought coffee and brewed it in front of them. So I had every, I had my scale, my, uh, I, I used a French press, but a scale, a kettle of French press. <laughs> And they were probably like, I mean, the people at TSA were like, yeah, we need to uh, go through all. So, so it's done now. You sure? Yes. See, not dripping. We have successfully brewed our coffee. Now we have to make sure that it tastes okay, which I'm sure it does, because Jen. I put love in flawless. there. Flawless, flawless performance. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming. I don't think I don't think I missed anything. That's. Pretty much the majority, we've talked about the grinding, uh, yeah. how to figure out how much water for coffee if you don't have a scale. This perfect. I feel like I it could've done a little bit more over. on like the first or second, because I did a lot yeah, of water on the third. third. The first is the one you want to do the most. Yes. Well, I've only done this twice, so. I can't good, really say it always. Good. Yeah. It was good. I feel like I'm gonna have to be a pro because I have to start knowing how to make coffee when Bonnie isn't home because sometimes I'd like it before he comes home for lunch. It's true, and I've been coming home not later Not that I'm a stay at home wife. I'm, I'm just kidding. I just have nothing to do because of coronavirus. Yeah, so if you're trying to brew coffee at home, you have a pour over French press, Aero, Aero press, whatever it is you like to brew coffee on, and don't have a scale, although I'm sure if you have a number of those things, then you have a scale. You can make it work. You don't have to have a scale. If you want to try for the first time, start simple. You're going to drink a lot of shitty cups of coffee. I can't tell you how many I've had. Uh, but you learn along the way, and then eventually you know that you'll make at least a half decent cup of coffee. So it the most important like... part is the coffee. You gotta have good coffee, it's okay. I made a face and they're gonna be like, man, yeah. she made shitty coffee, <laughs> but it just burnt me. It does matter though, cause you can have the best coffee and then brew it wrong, so this is an important aspect. True. And then I could go over French press too. I actually like had somebody tell me about them uh, making French press and like what they did. And I was like, well, hold on a second, you're doing it completely wrong. And they were just like, well, no wonder my coffee's terrible. And I was like, yeah. But those are, are so straightforward. So if people are doing that wrong, a pour over is a little difficult. So well, when you buy them, they never give you measurements. I would just kind of go for it. One time I made coffee. That was good. Uh, I made coffee and it looked like tea because I didn't put enough coffee yeah, in it. That'll happen. But yeah, grind size, uh, depending on what you're brewing on, the amount of water, the temperature of the water, how you actually brew it, how long you let it sit. Every, there's so many things, uh, so many factors that play a role. I wouldn't worry about people who are like, oh, you need you know, hard water versus soft water, soft water like water, not hard water. And, and that, that gets a little complex, that's way down the road. But this is just simple. Yeah, it's filtered. Britted. Britted. So hopefully that was helpful. If you wanna try making a pour over, just do it. It's simple. You're gonna need some equipment and I can put links to the stuff that I used uh, down below, except this, there won't really be a product link for that. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, they'll be online. Website. They have a website, so I'll put it on there. But with that being said, get your stuff, get your setup. Get some coffee. Our coffee is actually available on that website as well now. So for the first time, and that's limited. With that being said, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something, you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Watch.